If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. It might be that there is a Jew in Jerusalem who has no clue what Christians believe, who happens to be watching me right now, who lives down the block from me, and he's not completely sure if I am characterizing Christian beliefs accurately. But you, you were in the church. I'm steel manning this. Moving right into the next caller. Hopefully you're not hearing me leak through on my conversations. <laughs> I know that can be annoying for you. So, caller, you are caller. You are live on the air. Please tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Laura, and I'm calling from Ventura, California. Welcome back, Laura. How are you? Go right ahead with your question. Okay. Uh, I'd like your opinion on this thought, Rabbi. That's the idea of original sin that Christians claim we have inherited. It seems to me that what uh, Christians have in common with Adam and Eve is that they try to hide from God, not acknowledging their responsibility and asking forgiveness. Both like Adam and Eve, they, they hide from God. Adam and Eve covered themselves in fig leaves and Christians hide behind Jesus. Adam <laughs> essentially blamed God when he said, the woman you gave me, she made me eat. And Christians have God be punished for the sins they committed, right. or so they believe. Right. What they have in common with Adam and Eve is not acknowledging their sin and asking forgiveness. What unfolds in Genesis 3 is the antithesis of the kind of quality that the Messiah would have. We've, we've talked about Yehuda and Tamar in the past, in that most embarrassing chapter of the Torah, Genesis 38. It's just embarrassing and what woman would make herself a prostitute when failing to get a third husband from Judah. What man would confess his his unpleasant sin when he can have her disappear? And we we talked about how great people were not sinless, but rather they just owned up to it. And we see the 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 reverse of that the the error of. Odom and Chavo in Genesis 3, it's so explicit that they're blaming each other. And that's what Mashiach will be like. Mashiach, he won't be sinless. It's just he'll own up to his mistakes. The reason why we want a Mashiach that's sinless is because he wants someone who's not like us. But the way Mashiach might not like be, be like us is the only difference is that not that he is the son of God or born of a virgin, that's crazy because then what's the big deal? It's no big deal to be sinless if you can't sin. You can't. Christians, the, the Jesus of Christianity can't sin. Can't sin. Why? Because, you know, it, but it doesn't make sense. If you can't sin because you're the son of God, born of a virgin, then what's the big deal? Anybody can do that. If I was the son of God, I wouldn't sin either. Like, try being real, a real person, one of a man and a woman, and not sinning. Or confessing your sin, owning up to your sin, repenting for sin. That's what makes... In Adam and Eve, you very wisely point out that Adam and Eve, they each blame the next, right? So what the great people... Uh, the feature that we see the great people display is they're not sinless. They just go, all right, I made a mistake. I blew it. I'm sorry. And I, I, I must say this to you that if you think about the people who messed you up in your life, who betrayed you, if had they only, if your ex-husband had only said, I sinned against you, and I renounce what I did, I regret what I did. If your ex-wife had only said to you, I confess my sin against you, I renounce what I did, you'd still be married. <laughs> you would have forgiven her. You would have forgiven him completely if he'd only said that and done that, for sure. Okay? All right. So that's what's going on. And, and why do we behave that way? Because we're created in the image of God. I mean, we have a divine soul in us. So therefore, it's not that, it's not that um, God is like us, but we're like God. We have, we're, 
we're hardwired for that. We're just, I am so deeply sorry about what I did. I confess what I did. I renounce what I did. Wow. Think of all your exes, your ex-partner, your spouse, your, your sibling, who you haven't spoken to in years. If that had gone down, you'd still be talking. You'd be the way things should be, okay? Okay. Why? Because we're creating the image of God. That's why. And what we're called to do is to be like Hashem, to live up to that potential. Because we also are created from the clay of the earth, like animals. So there's, that's why there's tension. You know, angels, they're completely metaphysical. There's no tension. We have the God and the animal in us, and they're competing. Okay? Stay with me. Why do you need original sin? in the Pauline iteration of this, is you've got to explain why do I need Jesus. You need to explain to someone why you would need something that should not be necessary and isn't. It means if you could stand in front of HaKodesh Baruch Hu and say, I sinned before you. I regret what I did. I renounce what I did. I am so sorry and turn away from that sin, and God will hear your supplication and forgive you for your transgression, and your sin will no longer be remembered against you. You know, sometimes people get into a fight, and even though they might forgive each other, the next time there's a fight, that old thing comes up again, right? And you go, why'd you bring it up? I thought you forgave me. Because Hashem is perfect in his mercy. When he says, I forgive you, it means your sins will not be remembered against you. I say, no. Ezekiel 18, 21 through 23. Not be remembered against you. But if you can sin and then repent, and God's mercy will afford you a complete atonement what do you need Christianity for? Do you understand? So Christianity needs to, in some way, persuade you that you need the church, you need the cross, you need the Lamb, you need Golgotha, you need Calvary. And that's why right now, as I'm speaking, there are millions of people in churches in the Americas right now who are being told that there's nothing you can do. There's no works that you could commit that you can do that can save you. No, nothing you can do to save yourself. There's no work, there's no effort, there's no initiative of yours that can save you. And you who were a Christian, who are a Christian, you know I'm not lying. Maybe there's a Jew in Tel Aviv who's watching me now who's never been a Christian, who's not sure if I'm Maybe making this up because I'm not fond of Christianity. It might be that there is a Jew in Jerusalem who has no clue what Christians believe, who happens to be watching me right now, who lives down the block from me, and he's not completely sure if I am characterizing Christian beliefs accurately. But you, you were in the church. You know I'm not overstating. I'm not, I'm steel manning this. That's exactly what the church will tell you that you are broken, you're sinful. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. Man is totally depraved. Totally depraved means that there's no initiative of yours that can save you. You're broken. Why? Because of the original sin. Paul makes a great, a big deal about this in his, in his most important, in his most influential letter, the book of Romans. Why does he need original sin? Original sin is necessary because it's like you're in the Bahamas and you're trying to sell, you know, you know, snow blowers. They don't need it. There's no snow there. Okay? So there is no God who won't forgive you. There is one Lord to whom alone you should pray, to who alone you should bow, to who alone you should worship, who will forgive you if you, from your heart, regret your sin, renounce your sin, confess your sin, 
give Hashem a big kiss, Hashem will forgive you. If a person does tshuva, repents, out of love, not out of fear, and it's a good thing to repent out of fear. It's a very high level. If a person does tshuva me'ahava, out of love, your sins turn into mitzvot. I'm not kidding. You eat pig, you eat pork. Or well, let's talk about something people more likely to do. You spoke lush and hara about someone. You committed the sin of calumny. It's a very grave sin. But you do tshuva me'ahava out of love for Hashem, your sin becomes a mitzvah, like you put on tefillin. I'm not kidding. So the reason why the church needs original sin in that man is completely infected with sin, that's needed because what do you need Jesus for? And you can imagine that the church fathers who had a worldview that preceded their Christian religion, that viewed the world this way, I'm thinking of Augustine, the Western church father, probably the most important church, Latin church father for sure, you know, who came from the Manichaeist world. This fit perfectly into his worldview, and therefore he would amp it up and amp it up to the point, and other church fathers and reformers would amp it up further to the point of Calvinism, Reformed theology, that you can't even believe in Jesus on your own. You had to be selected for that. So that's the story of Adam and Eve and the broken church and the only God that can save you, and that's the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thank you for your question. If you enjoy this program, Please like and subscribe. Adon Olah, Asher Malach, B'terem Kol Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, B'chev Tzokor, Azai Melech, Azai Melech, Shemu Nikra, V'achare, Lord, I'm not